Hi. Hi. I'm uh, Henk van Bremen. I work for uh, Atlink Technology. I'm a general manager for uh, a department that is doing computer on modules. And here we see the world's most powerful ARM desktop, no? Right. So we, we started working uh, something like two years ago, three years ago, together with ARM UK on, on a project that was targeting uh, automotive. Now, one of the interesting things about the project is uh, that they were using, uh, or they plan to use, uh, a processor called uh, Ampere Ultra. That's uh, one of the fastest ARM processors, general purpose ARM processors on the market. So we were very happy with that because at that time, Ampere uh, was actually concentrating more on, on cloud uh, vendors and whatever. They didn't have so much I4 embedded. But together with ARM, we were able to convince them to turn this into a kind of a embedded product. So what, what we made is, uh, well, the result is a desktop actually for, uh, for Neoverse uh, uh, software development. But the thing is built kind of special because it's, uh, it's based on a COMHPC form factor. Now, COMHPC is a computer module that is being used uh, in, uh, in, in embed, embedded uh, edge, uh, edge, com edge computing. So having that module, we are now able to take that module out and put it in different kind of uh, applications. Because uh, the desktop, of course, is not, uh, is not, not our main business. We, we're in the business of building uh, edge computers. Uh, so this one is running. So why is Ampere special? Uh, Ampere is special, Ampere Ultra is special because it is system ready. Um, there are three, three, three degrees of system ready. The lowest one is IoT and the highest one is actually server level. So if you have a system ready system, what do you have? Basically, you got a system with a bias. So what we can do on these, uh, on these systems, we can install off the shelf uh, uh, ARM64 uh, distributions. This one is even licensed for Ubuntu, but we can just take uh, Debian, we can take CentOS, whatever. It runs on the system because it has a very high abstraction. You could put it on a USB stick and click and install. Yes, absolutely. Just like x86. So uh, the, the importance is, is not only that uh, you, you can install it easily, but you can leverage the whole ecology that has been built up, the middleware, the applications that run on these distributions, or whatever. So this offer now on Linux level is uh, almost uh, compatible to an x86 offer. So how many cores is in this one? This one is top of the line. So we, we, we did that uh, because I also want to show some power consumption. This is 128 cores. So you can, the, you can the see it here. highest running. ampere ultra. That's the highest, the highest one at the moment, right? We we start at 32, 64, 80, 96, and uh, 128 core. So, so we see all the cores there. Here you can see 128 cores. All right, and then you can. Uh, so what you can see here is uh, actually how much power it draws. Of course, it's 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 not doing a lot uh, right now. It's uh, around 70, 70 watts, as a, as, as in rest. So we got uh, S3 on this thing, where we can stress the, where we can stress it. You see now, the, now the, the cores get loaded, and then you can go back to your uh, power meter and uh, and see how much uh, it's actually drawing. So, the whole argument for the Ampere solution is it offers the best performance per watt in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Right? It's, it's around 30, 30, 40 percent lower. And especially what I say, embedded application, mo a lot of these applications are going to be mobile. And if you have mobility, then battery life is, uh, is extremely important. Another thing is, um, we used to deal with uh, 60 watts, 50 watts uh, in, in, a, in a construction. That's already a very uh, difficult way to, to build a heat solution that are kind of fanless. So once you go to a higher level, I mean, just what Intel and AMD are offering in, in the, the comparable, you go to 250 watts. This is almost impossible to cool without having fans or, or whatever. So here, you, you can even see the, 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 well, of course, we're using liquid cooling on this thing, but uh, the SOC temperature doesn't go over 50, 50 degrees. So if you have, a, a, how do I say, good, efficient solutions, these things are easy to cool because uh, it doesn't really draw more than 100, 120 watts. I mean, what you saw is 130, 140, but that's of course the whole system. And, and, that's and what, what's the, <coughs> the solution here for the cooling? It's a, well, it's just an off-the-shelf uh, gaming, gaming liquid cooling. Uh, that's, uh, 
There is a there is a standard solution in the market for people who are buying our, our development kits. They can uh, t test cooling uh, cooling themselves. So this is just a, a gaming a kind of just it's just a gaming system. What's happening down there? That's where the power is. <coughs> it's the power supply. Yeah, it's a power supply and uh, just a, a lot of cabling uh, on the underneath. And so people can buy it like this from you or? Yes, we, we sell it in two ways. We sell it uh, as a system. Systems are typically used by people who want to do a software development. Because if you want to develop for NXP, you, you don't want to compile your stuff on an NXP process. You want to have something uh, very, very, very fast. So these are ideal systems uh, to do uh, development, even for different uh, kind of ARM chips as long as the 64 bits. Then, then, we, then we have boxes. We, we get to that later. And these boxes are purely board level. So you, you only get the boards. And these are typically for people who plan to do embedded solutions. So what these guys will do, they will not use the standard uh, carrier boards. They will start developing their own carrier boards. I mean, uh, if you go to medical, they will have put DSPs, they will put the FPAs. All this stuff that you cannot buy is an off-the-shelf solution. So these people have to make their own carriers with their specific, how do you say, just the IP and the specific knowledge uh, building, and then they click the Comets PC module on top of it. We're taking care of the complexity of uh, memory, PCI Express, uh, all the all the high speed stuff, and that's on the module. So typically, if you get projects of 1,000 piece or 2,000 piece, you cannot make single board computers. It's just way too expensive. So in this kind of volume, 1,000 to 5,000. These are ideal solution because it lowers the total cost of ownership for customers. Uh, I've been going to the Lenara Connect since 12 years ago, maybe, and um, all this time there was three, four hundred engineers, the, some of the best Linux and ARM engineers in the world. Correct. Yes. And they all used Intel laptops for the work. Yeah. But all they, these years, yeah. and they were all clamoring and demanding a solution like this. So this is perfect for them, right? right? So we, we, got, uh, we, we got people who bought, bought the systems uh, are from the main uh, OS distributions. Uh, I, I think Red Hat is working on, Sushi is working on. Because uh, when you develop on ARM, you want to be on ARM. Yeah, That's of the course. Best. You, you don't want to get out of that environment. I mean, just do cross-compiling, or even online compiling. It's, I mean, it's available, but to have something on your desk, uh, and especially it's noise free, eh? you don't hear anything in the systems and it's, it's, it's doing on a 20, 130 watts. And it's full, full load right now. Yes, it's full load and it's 50 degrees on the SOC. And it's quiet. I'm not in, like in an airplane, like, like sometimes yeah, 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 yeah. some server yeah, yeah. solutions are very, so very noisy. Now, what I said about system ready, right? Okay, so in the back we got a proof of concept. So we, we're running your video, but the most interesting thing is we, we're not running this on Linux. Oh. So let's see what we have here. We're running this on Windows 11. There's a Windows here. Right. So you thought it was difficult to install this? Actually, no. It was quite easy. We just use UUDP. We download the standard, how to say, ISO for uh, ARM Windows 11, and we just straight install it on the system. Just like a USB stick, just if we have an XCD6. Because I saw one YouTuber guy, he was uh, having a trouble to get this done. Right, 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 right. Because he was uh, working on the, because we, we have two, uh, two actually two versions uh, of Ultra, the, the, old, the old generation, the current generation and the newer generation. That's called the Ultra Max. So we, we, um, we, basically we don't have AMI BIOS, we have EDK2. That's an open source BIOS UEFI uh, uh, le level uh, application that has the same extraction as a. Uh, so when he received the system, uh, MP was very proactive and shipped in the highest but we weren't ready with the buyers yet at that moment. So now, now we are. That's, uh, so this is, uh, this is 32, oh, how many cores in this, this is, one? This is 32 core. All right. So this is considering that you do this without Windows, Microsoft not having joined this yet we didn't uh, get to support or anything, right? right? So what we're right now, we're doing, we're doing HLK testing to see how compatible this thing really is. I mean, we, we already know that there's some drawbacks, right? So Windows 11 for ARM, why, how is it being used? It's being used on Qualcomm processors for notebooks. So there are hardly any mainstream or, 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 or desktop level drivers available for this kind of system because there's no market for that right now. So, so even the USB Ethernet and everything, you have to well, USB, figure it out? USB is working, right? But for example, the, the internal Ethernet that we're using is just a normal internal Ethernet controller. 
there is no driver for that because it's not being used in the, in the current Windows 11 ARM ecology that is purely netbook based. So if we want to get Ethernet, we have to just uh, get, get a USB dongle on the back right now to, uh, to get this. Uh, All right. Most important thing is uh, these things are uh, basically for, uh, for um, also for AI. So the most important thing is that this, these things get paired with NVIDIA cards. We can put two of these uh, big beasts in, in these systems. Where does it go? There are two uh, by 16 slots here, and you got uh, three U uh, on, on both of these slots. So you can put two, 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 three, three slots, uh, two three slot cards on these things. So How good does it work with the NVIDIA cards? It works. Uh, on Linux, it works very good. Uh, CUDA is, uh, is fully supported, and Ampere is doing a lot of work. And I think we work closely with NVIDIA to qualify uh, the, these things that, that YOLO, CUDA, everything is, is working on these things. Now we're looking, of course, to Windows, because we would also like to have it to work on Windows. Uh, so that's where we probably need some help from NVIDIA to uh, get these drivers. Because uh, the last power. two, three years, Apple has been doing really cool laptops, MacBooks. Yes. And there's always this rumor that maybe at some day they will do Mac Pro. Uh -huh. like a big desktop well this and was they sometimes sell them for five thousand dollar right so you got, so a, you got a co youtuber uh jeff jeff Helix. he he said that he said this system should be built by uh, apple not by us because the uh, desktop system based on arm are, are going to going to be a trend uh, that's for sure i mean not not just the, the average every average person but yeah because uh, uh, for example if you're a developer and you need to compile uh, this is going to be way faster per watt than any other solution and yeah, the fastest yeah. arm in the world. Yeah. And then I wonder how many other high demand applications can be accelerated right now on this. Could I? Well, it's AI inferencing. And what I say, we did a, pr a project with, um, with uh, Arm UK. The, this system is actually was built for Arm UK. Um, they, they have an initiative called SOFI. SOFI is a, a cloud infrastructure, a containerized cloud infrastructure for automotive. That means they will put simple tasks in every container, specifically uh, for, uh, for automotive. Of course, uh, uh, ARM is very interested in that to get people on the, on the Neoverse, uh, Neo, Neoverse platform. So it already exists because the, these things, why these things are so good in cloud? Because they have a lot of cores and their performance is very predictable. You, you know that if you go to XCD6, they use, the, the core count is not that high, but they use a lot of tricks to get their performance up to par. That makes the system as such very unpredictable. These systems per core are very de deterministic. You always know what performance you get per core. In an XCD6 system, that is not, not, so, not, not so clear. So for containerized computing and, and uh, uh, computing for, uh, for, for whatever, for automotive, you need more predictability. So there they come in very, very good. So when they're developing maybe a self-driving software or yes, some kind of yes. smart automotive future well, solutions yeah, and everything? In, in, the, in the end, in the end uh, a car will consist of two systems. One thing is the, the, the automotive processor that is actually handling the machine, right? Then, then we're talking about uh, lower, lower level uh, arm, uh, arm things. The other thing is the awareness, right? The camera input, the processing and acting based, based on that. So th th that's kind of the big brains. The small brains is the immediately interfacing with the, with the engine, controlling the engine, and the big brains is what you see and what you hear and how you process and how you act on it. Also, and that, that, that are those things. Uh, but also, as I understand, the ARM is really fascinating in the way that they build the SOCs to have accelerators for many different things. And I guess the, way, the day Apple is going to yeah. do the Mac Pro, they will include video encoding, GPU, yes, everything on the SOC. This one not. It's so purely only delivering CPU. cores and memory. And then uh, if you want to do acceleration, you will slot it in here with a GPU. In, uh, a graphic card. Right? Or you maybe some kind of video encoder, acceleration yes. Yes. kind of yes. card. Yes. And this is the way that could be done. Yes. It, it's already being done like that because that is what the, the Sophie Arma UK product is about. Uh, they, they add these cards and, and, and for inferencing and, and things like that. And maybe, um, who knows what happens in the future with the Ampere One yeah, well, and all this stuff. Maybe right. they're going to see, uh, because it's going crazy with the cloud, yeah. right? So the, well, this is very compatible with the whole cloud market. Another, right? another interesting thing is, and that's going to be a very disturbing uh, uh, development in the, in, the, in the embedded industry, in all the industries. In two years time, you cannot ship any products anymore without secure software stack. 
So that is going to be very, very, very disruptive in the, in the market. So um, people who have uh, built up their, uh, their, their software chain, I mean, uh, in medical or whatever, they have to rethink how they're going to implement software because it has to be secure. Um, we see that most of the security is basically is, is going gonna, is gonna to happen on, on containers. Uh, containers also let you easily, how do you say, transfer, transfer applications, even in between x86 and, and ARM or whatever, because they're kind of independent from the hardware. So uh, this system is already has that stack. We work together with Foundry's I.O. Foundry's I.O. comes from Linaro, right? So it comes directly from, uh, how do you say, just uh, ARM UK, <laughs> Linaro, Foundry's I.O. Foundry's I.O. has something like, uh, they call it a factory, where you can uh, hook in your devices, they will take care of uh, updating. We are also in the middle to take care of updated software and you get OTA delivery of your software. Big security means updating. I mean, it's just like uh, an, an Android phone or whatever. And this is gonna be very disruptive. And that's where ARM can dive in, I think. That's, that's, that's the moment. But the, but the Foundry's I.O., in theory, they could provide forever security updates, extremely yes. fast, extremely yes. secure, yes. safe and to update, and, and right. never have and issues and with security. The most important thing is it's an agnostic system. It doesn't, it doesn't say it's only for ARM, it's also for x86. It's not tied up to a vendor. I mean, we cannot provide, how do you say, security updates by ourselves. Our scale is not that big. You need something like an operating system that is, that is, that is hosting uh, applications and that is agnostic. So Windows is that, more or less, Linux is that. So you need a, a kind of uh, <laughs> an organization that's doing it. And Foundry's I.O. is, at the moment, one of the only ones that has a solution that it, where everybody can, can join in. So uh, as I understand this, Computex was so mm. cool with the opening keynote with Jensen Huang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then his company is a trillion dollars now. Right. And it sounds like there's so much demand for AI acceleration. Yeah. The industry is going completely bananas. I don't know, we're here in Taiwan. And probably some of your neighbors are, are making a bunch of this stuff, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. We got and, mic Micron in the back here. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so, so this is fully compatible with this whole yeah because because you know it, rapidly growing market of, of cloud I, design right I don't, even, I don't even like to use the word AI I just call it a box with a GPU card I mean we we <laughs> been shipping boxes with GPU cards for for ages now now the software level is going to change because they're going to be used for a different purpose but basically on a hardware level we just it's just a box with a GPU card actually it's just a gaming system I mean. And but this, yeah, the, like yeah, the, the industry, yeah, as I understand, is yeah. the demand. I don't know if we can draw it on the on the wall here, yeah. but it's like really going up, like uh, in a way that I, n I don't know if they can deliver towards the demand. There's so much demand, right? This is fully compatible with all these cloud server systems, right? Yeah, 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 so yeah, when yeah, people yeah. develop for any of the cloud servers, they should work here. Yes, they can work here, but to honestly say Amazon already has a kind of infrastructure for, uh, for Ampere where you can, without, without buying one of those, you can already uh, do, do, some, uh, do, do some work on, on Ampere cores uh, in, in the cloud. But I, I feel that nothing better than to have one under the table. It's, so it's, the more professional like, you are, the closer you want to be to your hardware. Of course, you, wanna, you, you know, you want to have one, right? <laughs> And, and uh, who knows with the, because the way you work is with the industrial, but also... Well, mostly industrial. This is, this is kind of, you know, these systems are kind of uh, um, promotional, promotional items. First of all, we, we, we want to bring awareness in the markets that ARM is available right now. You can have it at the desktop and you can build it into your embedded systems. I mean, it's not something of the future anymore. It is there. And it's just as convenient as we use from x86. And that's what I said, this is where the system ready stuff comes in because most of the distributions are su supported off the shelf. So uh, this is for awareness, right? And then uh, we, we've got some other boxes which is pure board level. That is for the real developers. How, how do you see the demand on the market for ARM servers? Okay, for, for, okay so, so typically, I, I will tell you typically um, uh, application. Um, so this is automotive. Don't think that if BMW decides to use ARM in their, in their cars, they're going to go to Adlink. Come on, the scale are totally, totally different. But at the moment, there are already a lot of companies who are making test equipment for AI. And that means they go with a car on the road, they have a big box in the back, and they record the roads. 
They take the data back to the laboratory and then they start doing uh, simulations and whatever. Okay, this testing equipment, the scale is whatever, 2,000 piece, 4,000 piece per year. This is where ARM, ARM comes in and these systems come in because these guys, they're going to build something with a massive amount of SEDs or, or whatever. We already see that. We already talk with customers like that for, uh, for, for using uh, Ampere Ultra in, uh, in the embedded market. And when people develop, uh, let's say, self-driving software for a Tesla, let's say, uh, yeah. which is using an ARM SOC on yeah, the well Tesla. They, they, they could use it. As long as you're yeah, on yeah. an ARM, everything is compatible, right? Yeah, There's yeah. Yes. interoperability. Yeah, 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 Your yeah. software is better yes. to be developed here. Right. As long as AR, ARCH64, uh, then, uh, then you're good with these things. So. Yeah. All right. Cool. And uh, so, so just. Do you think that it would be in your interest to bring this to consumer market, to make it even yeah, we, huge? We, we have to be reasonable. I mean, Edling is a company that is, has, has, a, has, a, has a model. We, we, we kind of model is a, a low volume, high mix, right? That is a business model. If you really want to go into the high volume, you basically have to change your organization. That's, a, I would say, somebody is going to step in in one year or whatever, they're going to build a system that is uh, way cheaper than we build it. Because, by the way, we build it with two PCBs because we have a different purpose. We want to move this module out of it and put it into embedded applications where customers uh, build carry boards, specific uh, application specific carry board. That is the purpose of this one. And of course, that makes the system a little bit more, ex more expensive. So very easy to undercut it on price. Uh, that's, uh, but the thing is, nobody dared to stick his neck in, you know, neck out for, 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 for this development. And, and we did that. With the help of ARM UK, but still we said, yeah, this is the right direction. How long time did it take you to get to here? Probably to two years. Two years? Yes. And you have an amazing team here. We're on a weekend, so they're yeah, not yeah, here yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we, yeah. We, we just moved to the new building. I mean, you, you, you saw it, right? F yeah. Finally, we got, we got one of our own. Uh, that's, uh, With how many floors here? Uh, ten floors. Ten floors, and all is AD Link. It's all AD Link. This, this is the how do you say the computer module BU, and we get software guys uh, in in the back here. All right. Then upstairs we got uh, data acquisition, and, uh, machine automation uh, departments, uh, whatever, and the R and D is spread all over. They mostly sit together with the with the with the how do you say business units, with the the, the departments. So if people buy 10 or 100 of these, they get a discount? Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yes, right. yes. We, we're selling, you saw, right? We have a concept site called iPyWiki. It's not even called AdLink, but to sell development kits. Uh, we do it for smaller things, and we do that for, for, for this one. Uh, and uh, you pay by credit card, and we ship it in two weeks or whatever. That's uh, yeah. easy. No, no, no need to talk to sales. No need to have stories why you want to buy things. You just use your credit card, just like uh, AliExpress. Hello, I'm Mr. Beast. No, I'm not Mr. Beast, actually. But if I was Mr. Beast and if I was sending you a bunch of money, I would use Wise. Wise is a really smart way to send money around the world. Tiny little fees. Check out my video, a seven minute video where I try to explain some more. It works in hundreds of countries. Every time you go to a different country, use your Wise card or use your Android Pay, your, your uh, Apple Pay to do all your payments with a tiny little conversion pay. Uh, fee. If you have some customers in different countries, they can send you money to local bank accounts in the US and Europe, all over the world. You can get local bank account details. They transfer tiny little fees. Don't use PayPal anymore. Don't use Western Union. And don't use your bank to send money because it's surprising, but you wouldn't know maybe, but they take fees that are gigantic, that are pretty big. Just use the wise. It's smart.